Hi everyone. So this uh, this is Roland from Myotax. So I will do a short presentation, basically to give you guys an update on the UCAN uh, project. Uh, the title is Building Consumer Products on IGFS and Five Coin Network: The Challenges and Opportunities Here. Uh, yeah. So about me, you know, um, background in cryptography, very early adopter of Bitcoin, leading lots of security and privacy initiative at Google and uh, Uber. Then start IOTAX uh, with two other co-founders three years ago. Um, so we're doing pretty good. So basically all IOTAX is about is trying to introduce a vision of Web3 into the space of IoT. Uh, so basically everybody has a dream for a safe, you know, safety, like an intelligent and private future, uh, which has been threatened by intrusive surveillance and advertising. So we are you know, surrounded by too many devices right now, watching, listening, and sensing, recording us all the time. And our sensitive information is constantly exposed to hackers and you know, unfortunately also abused by corporate intermediaries, right? So I, I think you, uh, the following news here will not surprise you. Basically someone tap into your home camera, talking with your kids, or maybe your home video data gets leaked because you know, wise have their data, has a data breach. So that's kind of problem like we, we, are, we are fixed. Um, so uh, we start with like one very concrete like project is a home secure camera like uh, almost 10 months back last year. Uh, like the idea behind I can, uh, you can is not too complicated. So basically we give like a blockchain identity to each of the devices, users and applications and we do design like a, a cryptographic protocol for binding all of them together to derive a key which will be used on the UCAN uh, for encryption, uh, encryption of all the video data. So once the data gets encrypted, it will be uploaded to IPFS and Filecoin network for long-term storage and some yeah, short storage as well. And when user intends, we will enable confidential computing over encrypted data. Uh, you know, of course, there are some you know, key negotiation protocols underneath to do intelligent stuff like AI object detection for, for, the, for, the, for the home video data. I will show you guys a demo later. So that's a whole idea. Uh, of course, lots of technical details I'm not going to talk about today. Uh, so basically the update, uh, up to, uh, uh, the update from UCAN is pretty good. Uh, it's a world first blockchain powered consumer product uh, and the manufacturer is complete, right? So I'm so glad to see uh, the first 10, uh, probably 10K, 20K each of UCAN has already been stocked into Amazon's uh, warehouse as of, I think this Monday. Um, and we should be able to see um, Amazon, this, this gets sold on Amazon coming about two to three weeks, you know. Uh, of course, that's a very cool camera. It has, has all the cool features the camera should have. In addition, it has this decentralized identity and encryption, confidential computing, and most importantly, like user-owned storage, basically to realize the vision of own your data. So you can, it's just a start, and we, we do have a roadmap down the road, you know. Um, so what we want to do with this, uh, you know, Web3 version in you know, IoT space. The first step is, of course, keep your data 100, you know, person private. That's where we are right now. And the next step that's coming, you know, in the next two quarters is analyze the data in a very privately manner. Yeah, mostly using confidential computing. And the third one, most likely next year, is trying to tokenize, you know, trade the data. But there are lots of, you know, um, I think lots of things to, to, to work on. Um, but no matter where we are, IPFS and Filecoin will always be the storage layer uh, for IOTAX uh, blockchain and products. Uh, we are like all the data and assets will be, you know, uh, living on. So next, we'll share with you guys like two very concrete things uh, we have done with IPFS and Filecoin. You know, thanks, you know, for the help from the community, especially from Dietrich, Puja, and many other people gave us, you know, lots of feedbacks, lots of helpings here. Uh, the first way, the first way uh, we have done is firmware update. So this, let me place a wheel here. So the context here is like every camera will have to update its firmware uh, weekly, almost weekly, basically to have the latest bug fix, you know, new features, optimizations, and everything. And we did this using IPFS network. Uh, so there are three benefits. The first one is of course integrate protection on, on, on the firmware itself, so no one can tamper that. Uh, the firmware that has been distributed uh, through the like, manufacturer. The second one is all, always like the CDN alike property of, um, uh, of IPFS makes like the download even faster than S3 as we tested. And the last one is, uh, you know, this uh, 
hot file will be you know widely distributed in the IGFS network, while the older ones, like the old firmware, probably no device will care about, will phase out gradually. So that's also a very nice feature. Uh, and I'm so glad to see, like starting from this version, uh, all the firmware updates actually went through IPFS already. Uh, there are 500 plus UCAN that went out through our pre-order program into the you know, um, American households already alive. So they use this feature on a weekly basis. And once it's get listed on Amazon.com, we should be able to see like a big number of UCANs uh, be activated uh, you know, uh, in this month, especially before Christmas 2020. Um, you know, thanks for the help from Dietrich and a lot of people. So we do have a case study here. Uh, if you want to take a look about this one, so there's a link to follow. So that's one. So the second one is very interesting too. Uh, it's basically like we we have done this POC about you know putting encrypted data. So you know, by the way, that's me just working into my garage, uh, tracing very casually. Uh, yeah. So the idea here is we put this encrypted data onto the Filecoin network and we enable confidential computing for object detection. So the POC has already been done. So we hope to launch this feature together with Filecoin mainnet launch end of this month. So this will be like a feature that has been unseen before in the camera space. Uh, very exciting for that. Yeah, so through this journey, we have seen lots of you know, opportunities and lots of challenges, okay, here. Um, of course, like the first one is opportunities. So we did see the camera space is an ever growing space. It's already a 100 billion market and still growing. If you look at the table, you know, on, on the corner, um, basically in 2015, in USA, every seven, seven person, so there is just owns one camera. And this number all, all has all, almost been like, a, you know, um, doubled. Uh, like in 2018, every, every four person will own a camera. And I'm sure like in 2020, this one will become like even, you know, maybe everyone own a camera. So it's a still a growing space. And we did see like the first generation of the camera has already kind of cannot satisfy the needs for security and privacy for lots of person, for lots of people. Um, so we, what you can do is opening this door for this new generation of cameras that is fully private, basically user owns everything. And third one is, of course, like the amount of data that's generated by those camera devices are huge. Um, so we have an estimate here on, on the top right corner. Um, for, for UCAM, basically a user who enabled this seven day rolling video recording uh, will spend roughly one gigabyte of data. So if, for example, if we have one sound users uh, using UCAM, um, then we were going to demand one TB capacity from Filecoin network. So of course, let's just start, right? So our estimation is, you know, one million you can be sold into, into just American household. So this will be demanding one PB capacity from the Filecoin network. So there is a huge business opportunity there as well. Yeah, there are even more challenges compared to the number of opportunities here, right? So I think the two, two one is, is your user adoption because our user is very non-techy and non-blockchain, non-crypto. So they don't know what is private key, they don't know what is Web3, so there's lots of educations needed to deliver this product into the hands of them. Another one is manufacturer-related challenges because IoT is a very traditional industry. It has a very long you know, supply chain, many dependencies. Uh, and also, most surprisingly, like people in this field uh, is very close mindset. Like open source software is something like they unheard of to lots of people in this industry. Uh, yeah, so I think those are the challenges. Uh, entirely for the entire industry. But there are two very specific ones we have seen, you know, uh, for, uh, for integrating with IPFS and Filecoin network. Um, this first one is like putting private data, uh, even encrypted onto a public domain, main concern users. Because I'm coming from a cryptography background, I know encryption is not future proof. Like AES is super secure today, but can be break tomorrow, you know. Um, so, how, so, so if a user, you know, encrypt their home data and put on the Filecoin network, right? How about if someone just, you know, scan and download all the, maybe archive all the encrypted files, uh, just put it there and waiting for five years until AES gets broken, then, you know, all the private information of this person's home will be leaked. So that, that's a problem here. That's a real concern. Of course, there, there are some work around. So one thing is we do like a multiple layer of encryptions to just reduce the chance of, you know, one encryption algorithm gets cracked. Um, 
that that's a naive way to address this problem. And another one is more intelligent, uh, which we, we want to you know, dive into more, is do some security sharing. It's, it's similar as the Ray Solomon code, as the previous presenter was talking about. Basically, we will have like a file code network holding maybe 90% of the amount of data, while the user or maybe the device will holding like a very tiny bit of this data. Um, so uh, from the information theoretic perspective, like uh, no information can be recovered uh, if this tiny bit of data has been missing. So this, there are more like a research to be done, but that's a, that's a cool approach, I think. And otherwise on the engineer side is if we can have like a permission to overlay over the fi file calling network. Yeah, so we already have some uh, talks with PowerGate folks. Uh, they have been really, really helpful on this one. So we are you know, working out some of the solutions to address this challenge. The second one is um, you can basically comes with a monthly subscription model, meaning uh, for example, if you can see the diagrams here, screenshots here, uh, user wants to purchase a seven days, like a rolling storage of your data for 30 seconds in the event of recording. So he will probably pay $2 per month for this feature. Uh, 14 days, maybe $3, I don't know, right? Just some random number. Um, so for now, they just pay fiat, so every, every, everything's good. But how can we transition this from paying fiat to you know, paying crypto, you know, fine coin, um, or maybe IOTAX tokens using, using the same like, uh, uh, model, monthly subscri subscription model, given the crypto tokens will be e extremely fluctuated. And also, not many people understand uh, crypto uh, coins and tokens. Of course, the first one is still you know, uh, education. Um, the second one will be incentiv incentivize people to use like a Filecoin, maybe IOTAX token, basically to get some discount on this monthly subscription. And third one I already talked with the team is have like integration with some fiat gateways, you know, maybe Changely or maybe other Uniswap type of thing to convert fiat to like uh, crypto coins, um, just you know, to reduce the frictions user will, uh, will have. Yeah, so that's that's basically two things, uh, two challenges we have seen, and uh, that's it, right? So that's 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 basically a status update about you can, uh, and here's my contact information. So I'm open to questions, and if you have any questions, you know, feel free to give me a a, a ping on email and Twitter. All right, thanks everyone.